All right, so we are working on this uh, Carol Marine painting. And again, we're dealing with the fact most of her paintings were done on six by six. So you're gonna notice that, that quite often, um, you know, you're, if you want to do rectangles, you're gonna have to turn the orientations into rectangles to get that to accommodate. So again, I've got my transparency uh, over this. This is um, a piece of uh, graphics art plastic. Um, it's just uh, similar to acetate and it's the fact that you can just draw on top of it and wipe it away. Got my dry erase marker. And then the first thing that you'll probably notice is we've got this rectangular orientation. I painted it red. It's already dry to the touch. And then we're gonna have to turn this into a rectangle. Now, they're not the same image I'm guesstimating when I'm printing it. So of course, I'm gonna have to ex you know, expand it a little bit to get it to fit the panel. But for sure, I'm also gonna have to like raise the top or raise the bottom or both. But I need to get it into more of a rectangle orientation. And because all of the action is happening here, I'm gonna add a little bit to the top. And I'm also gonna add just a little bit to the bottom so that I can get this rectangular orientation, right? So it's like I'm fictitiously making this up so that I can have my full five by seven panel. Does that make sense? And so then we want to determine what the spotlight is um, and the spotlight or the actor. Okay, so we're going to look for the spotlight of the um, show. And so this was one of the Carol Marine images that Tara picked. And you can see that there's kind of two competitors for the spotlight. There's three basic forms. But because these are similar in value and similar in color, I'm going to treat them like one giant form. And I'm just going to create a shaping that kind of encapsulates both of them. I'll just do that. Okay, so y'all see how even though there's some negative space going on, I just created a shape that would kind of um, encapsulate the biggest white shades and forms that are happening there with the cups. Then my secondary actor to me is this guy here, right? And then my tertiary actor is this. So those are my big shapes within the shape that is here. Um, if I was to take a piece of white paper and put it in between there, then you kind of see your basic shaping of what you've got. Um, and then when we have that shape down, we can kind of address other shapes within there. So I'm going to put like the tabletop, for example, which kind of uh, cuts into another piece. And then we notice this piece for the first time, right? So I'm cutting that big piece into a smaller piece. I've got that. And then we could even dissect this and this so that we have additional pieces. And that's pretty much all the mark making that is in this image, right? See? So that way we've kind of taken something kind of overwhelming and unmanageable, the painting wise, and then we've got our basic shapes and how we could translate this onto the panel. So without even focusing on the image, I'm gonna try and create something uh, drawing wise that I can put on the panel to um, you know, evaluate and go from there. So I'm uh, introducing my palette here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put just a little bit of uh, yellow ochre on the panel. Let's see if I can slide this over and then in turn slide this stuff over so that you can see all of it. Um, so the colors that I'm going to use today um, for myself are going to be, and I, I usually put them in order, so I'm skipping space. I'm going to put my titanium white here and then I'm going to put my yellow ochre here and you can use whatever your darker yellow is, but I'm putting a little blob of yellow ochre down. And these are the golden heavy body acrylics, right? You can use whatever you have uh, color wise. And I try to keep it in color orientation. So I'm going to do uh, pyrrole red next or your naphthol red or your um, cad red light, you know, whatever your bright red is. Then I'm going to do um, an ultramarine blue. And 
just a smaller tube, same thing. And then I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, sorry, bone black. And then I've got some titanium white in a big, large container that I'm going to put out. Okay. And then I'll just label them again, one, two, three, four, because for the sake of it, I've already told you what the true color names are, but just in case you're not using that specific paint, I'm just going to call it white, yellow, red, blue, black for the purpose of this video. Okay. But you know what the real colors are. We already went there and did that. So I'm remembering from last week and I'm just going to use um, one large brush and one small brush to try and do the entire painting. So for this purpose, I'm using uh, my silver brush, Bristolon. I'm using the number six flat and the number two um, small rectangle. So any uh, student brushes that you have that are similar in nature to that, perfect, right? Just something long and then something flat. The same things we used in the previous session would be perfect. And we're going to begin by trying to draw and measure out some of these items. So what I generally look for is thirds and uh, halves. That's usually the best measurement. So I'm going to start off by trying to measure the space of this table. Now I know that I made up some extra um, right? I drew that extra little box down, but I'm just going to see if I take my brush and go all the way up to the line where the tabletop is, and then I just mark my finger just to indicate that segment, it's one, two, three. So, you know, I was trying, I wasn't sure if it was going to work out or not, but I was trying to get a third, and I did. So I'm going to take just a little bit of this ochre, the yellow in number two, and I'm going to take just a little bit of black, just like we did last time, just to get it to show up on that colored background so that it becomes a little bit of a darker gold color, right? And we want it to be able to show up just as it did last time. And I'm going to try and guess where I believe a third to be on this panel. So putting a little mark and then I'm going to measure it and say, get this out of there. One, two, three. Nope, that's not it at all. So I'm gonna have to go up a little bit higher. And I'm gonna measure again. One, two, three. Okay, so that looks better. So I can start by putting that straight line all the way across. And that's gonna be my tabletop there. You don't have to have your paint this close to, I'm just doing it so that you can see what's going on. Now, I want to see um, if the distance between the top of this cup and here is the same as anything else going on in the painting. So I'm going to put my brush tip to the top of the image and then I'm just going to mark it with my finger and I'm going to try and find that same, uh-oh, look at that. So interestingly enough, it was, let me see if I can get another color of marker. So, interestingly enough, the segment from here to here was the same as here to here. So that was kind of interesting. Now, you're probably like, what the what? I don't even know where to go. We don't even have that on here yet. And you're right, we don't. So all I need to know is that um, whatever I make the one distance, the other distance is going to be the same. So I'm going to try and indicate here. I know um, the closest thing that I have to measure that X to is this, although I think this is going to be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to just see, oh, nope, they're the same, same size, right? So if I've already got this indication on the bottom, and that was a third, then I know that the same third is going to come down from the top and indicate the top of the cup. So I can put another line straight across here. So I basically just divided my image into thirds. Okay, so we have the image in thirds. I'm gonna spray my palette here to keep it a little bit more moist so my paint doesn't dry out. And then I'm going to 
trying to determine now that I've got the sections uh, between the cup, um, I see that this bottom line is where the bottom of the apple is, right? So what I'm noticing is we have this line where the table is, but the bottom of the cup is lower. Okay, so to indicate that, we determined that from here to here is the same as here to here. So when we go to measure from here to here, it should have been one, and that should be two, and this should be a third, right? So when I go to measure a little bit lower than the line, I should end up somewhere around here. I'm gonna put a line across, and then I'm gonna double measure because I might have to drop this top line down a little bit. I think I put it up a little too high. Drop mine down just a millimeter and then remeasure it again. There's one. Yep, and that takes me down to that other line, so that's good. Okay. So my three main lines are here here, here, and here. Now I'm looking at the distance between this piece and I want to try and determine where else I might establish that, the side of the cup and the end of the image. And I'll see how it relates down here. It's not quite the same. Um, let's see if it's the same as the actual step or the, excuse me, the fork or whatever that is, spoon coming out of the cup, and it is. So the distance between, I'll mark it for you, distance between here and here, we'll call it Y, is the same as here to here, okay? So what does that mean? <laughs> well, here's my Y here, right? I've already determined that because I said this was the bottom of the cup. Um, and then I've already got this line here and it's at a slight angle. So all I have to do is I can use my, uh, I'm not actually measuring the space, but just the shape of the angle. You see how it's at a slight uh, declension? And I'm just gonna move it over this way and that's gonna tell me a pretty good indicator of where I need that angle to be, to go down. And I'm going to go a little bit darker so I can see it. Okay. And so I have the declension there. I'm just going to re-accentuate these. And then I'm reminding myself that from this line up is, is Y, which was the same distance from here to here. So all I have to do is just measure this distance down here and then come back up and put it off of here and that'll tell me where my utensil end, whatever that is, whether it's a fork or a spoon sticking out of there, probably a spoon, comes down. Okay. Now I can break this shape into halves if I want, uh, meaning the bottom cup and the top cup but I see that they're the same. So it's just telling me that this shape from here to here is gonna just be broken in half, but it's kind of got this smiley face feature to it, right? So I can just find my halfway point and just put a subtle smiley face as many times as you need to draw it. And then you can measure it to double check one and two. So it's halfway. And then all we simply have to do is just connect the dots. I can look to see how far of a distance there is between here and the end. And I see that it comes out a pretty good ways. So that'll let me know, even if I have to extend this, which I can do later, but that lets me know to give myself a little bit of that distance. Knowing that this isn't the end all be all, so we've got plenty of time and space to alter it. And then I'm gonna close this area out. And then I've got my duplicated shapes there. And then I got to put this little apple knocking out of the side. So I'm going to go over and down 
And then I'm going to go down here again. This is just like the side of our house from last time. There's over, over, over. And then this goes down below, right? And then cuts back into the cup. It goes below that horizon line. And remember, it doesn't have to be the end all be all. We're just trying to get it down. We've got plenty of room to change it. So there's my stem. And then I see that right where this uh, spoon handle ends, the cup handle begins. So I, that lets me know where I can put, it's like this comes down and then it jumps over and this comes down. And that's got two spaces. And then if I were to draw a straight line down from this side of the handle, you see it's to the right slightly of that. So if I was to draw this all the way down, it'd be to the right slightly. And there's my second handle. And so in a very smooth and, and quick fashion, we've got um, a drawing created. And I'm gonna take my transparency in my uh, blank piece of paper off and look back at my image. Now, with the image, let me back up a little bit. Now with the image, we had created um, some shapings that weren't there, so now, with the transparency gone, it's time to kind of sculpt this to end up being what I need it to be in order to form the cup. So what that may look like is I see now that this is at an angle. See how it goes like a flat angle here, a flat angle here, and a flat angle here. Well, I've got this angle pretty, pretty well set in space, but I'm going to create a side angle here. And then I'm going to put an alternating angle here so that it goes boom, boom, boom. And then I'm choosing to taper this cup in. I had drawn that line to kind of indicate the side of it, but now it's going to be the edge of this other cup that it's sitting in. So I'm just going down and then I'm letting this scoop out and come over. And then I'm noticing the same thing on this side. It goes in. And then this part comes over. That way I've got more of my cup. The same thing with this spoon handle. I'm gonna angle that too so that it kind of looks like the top of a stop sign, like boom, 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 one two, three, and then just shaping down. Now the bottom of this cup, won't that be something special? So it tapers in a whole lot, uh, specifically right underneath the handle. So I'd say probably more right here. So that allows me to really curve this in a little bit more. And I'm going to curve this side out as well. So that I've got a little bit more of a rounded cup shape. And I'm going to put this little shadow shape in here since I've got this dark color. I'm kind of using just a watery black right now to draw. But I'm going to put that little shadow shape in. And I'm going to come on this side now that I've got the cup. I'm going to kind of reshape the bottom of my apple, which is not correct. But I'm going to get it a little bit closer to that direction. Okay. And I can tell already um, size-wise that I've pushed my apple a little bit too far over. 
Um, so I have a decision to make here for myself. Um, how important is it to me that that app will move over? Well, I'm not going to be able to put my um, shadow for the apple in there. I'll have some residue that I can put out for it. But to me, it's not important information to change. But if I did want to change it, this would be an easy point to um, slide it over just a little bit. I could. I see that this side looks good to me distance wise and so does everything else as far as top and bottom go. So the only solution would be to taper this cup in. So even though I'm okay with it, I'm gonna show you how to change it real quick just because if you had to, it wouldn't be a big deal. So you don't have to change yours. You can tighten up yours while I'm working on this, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it. So I wet my brush, it's a clean brush, and I'm just gonna push this over a little bit because we just put this down so it's still wet. So I can slim my cup out by moving this over a little bit, right? Now, I did know a minute ago that my uh, cup handle was too big. Um, so in order for me to cut that down, let me come off the top and slim over a little bit. Okay, and I may end up even having to slide it over a little bit more. But I'm gonna do the side of the cup there now. And because I did that, I can now taper the cup in, the other cup in a little bit more. And then I'm gonna move this over by doing the same thing, it's just a clean brush. And then I have room now to move my apple over the side of it. So I'm going to bring this part of the apple down. I don't really know that I would still have to bring it over that much. So just that quick, you can just alter your drawing. And that's the great thing about acrylic is it's not permanent. You can really wash over it. Now by the time you get to oil, you gotta be a little bit more spot on because that oil will mix. Um, there's still room for changes, but it's just a little bit more difficult. That's why I like having people start with acrylic. Okay, and there's a little bit of a space underneath here, which we'll get when we add the color. So that gives me a little bit more margin of error for the apple, and allow me to move it over slightly. So at this point, you wanna ask yourself if you are happy with your drawing, because we're gonna move in with paint. You don't have to be super stoked on it. I'm gonna put this little top of the handle, um, and then I'm gonna have this white part of the handle too, so that I can remind myself where that ends. But you don't have to be you know, super impressed with uh, painting. You just want to get it somewhat in the ballpark because as we go to block it in, you'll be able to make additional adjustments. So that's not a problem at all. So next we are going to start trying to conceal um, some of the background. And what we want to do first is we want to, I'm going to spray my palette one more time. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna start by painting these darker colors of the cup. And in order to do that, I'm gonna pull a little bit of blue, which is number four, and a little bit of black, and a little bit of this ochre too. So it's mostly blue in color, but I do have a little bit of the ochre and the black in there as well. And what the ochre does is just tone down the blue so it's not so straight up and the black kind of mutes it out. And then I can add a small dash of white just to make it chalky. And this is my white. So that was probably 85% blue, 10% uh, of the ochre, and then maybe just five and five of the red, or the black and the white. And I'm gonna add a little bit more white to chalk it up. And a little bit more black. 
Now I want this to purposely be darker than anything I'm working with because I'm just trying to um, get the dark centers of the cup together. And I see a plane here right above the handle and I see a plane right here below the spoon. And I'm gonna just put accentuating marks that just make that dark. I know that mine's bluer. That's what my brain is telling me as I'm putting it in there, but it's a-okay. So I'm just gonna put everywhere where I see that deep blue color. I'm putting it here and I'm noticing that really this could be a little bit smaller, right? It's like if I was to paint that totally, that section would be way too big. So that tells me that the cup can slide over a little bit more, but I'm not worried about that right now. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it in, but this could be a little bit shorter for me. And that would give me more space over here for the apple. Now I see a little bit on this side of the handle is dark. And I see a little bit down here and the bottom is dark. Okay. And now that I've got this bluish color down here, I kind of see it on this side of the panel. So I'm just going to put some in here. Um, and I'm just kind of spanning it over the red. I want little pieces of the red to show through. But I see this blue in the image. So I'm just going to kind of glaze it in here in the bottom and also to the side of the cup. I'm going to put a little bit in here. And I'm being real careful not to let it blend too much with that piece so I don't get them mistaken. I'm just going to go up the side of the image like that. Okay, and I'm going to clean my brush out. And I'm gonna go in because I'm noticing that this could be a little bit blacker. And I'm gonna take just black and just white and try and gray it up a little bit. There's plenty of blue on there. So I'm just trying to get something a little darker in value that I can readjust on top. And then I can just glaze right on top of that blue. And there I get something a little bit closer just in those sections. There's a little swipe of it here that goes down. And just the parts on the cup, I'm not redoing the parts in the background. And the important thing about painting dark delight is that we have to lay the dark colors down first or we won't have room um, for them later on. You'll have to paint them back on top. So that gets to be a little bit of a challenge. Now I'm taking a little bit of black and I'm coming up from the bottom of this spoon or fork or whatever, this handle of this utensil. And I'm just putting a little um, darkness there. That's a little bit big. I couldn't get that brush in there sideways. Take my small brush and see. There we go. And then I'm seeing that this is a little bit more darkened, so I'm going to put a little bit more dark down here at the bottom of the cup. And I'm gonna darken this line here a little bit too because I see a recession there and then also here, just so I can remind myself of where those guys are. Now, while I've got the black on the brush, I'm gonna come back and pick up some more of this blue color so now it's, you know, predominantly black and blue. And I'm gonna fill in the rest of this uh, spoon. And I see some of the red peeking through, but this is just a base coat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it down.
and then I'm cleaning out my brush. And then I want to, I'm trying to treat the dark areas. So I'm going to come over here to my apple and I'm going to take a little bit of black and a little bit of red. And I want to kind of fill in my apple. And trying to make sure that I get it straight because it looks like I'm looking at the angle of the side and I'm looking at how it comes down on the table. So it should be coming down and around a little bit more. See how it's sitting below the table here. So I want to make sure that I capture that without making the apple too long, which means for me, something I just noticed. is I'm looking at the negative space between here and here. And I'm noticing two things. That A, this cup is a little bit taller and angled, right? And then B, that this apple gets cut off a little bit more here. So I'm sorry my drawing was off so bad. But I'm gonna use the brush and I'm just gonna wipe down into, to create that negative space. When I talk about negative space, I'm talking about this angular shape that's cut in between the two shapes. And this is why I said, you know, you've got the whole rest of the painting to adjust things on there. But I'm going to take the top of the apple down too, because I've dropped it down here. So I want it to be a little bit lower on both respects. So I'm taking the brush and just wiping down a little bit. And then I'm also looking at the negative space between the cup and the apple down here on the bottom. And that's going to be another indicator that this is at an angle and this is scooped out here. And that's a little bit better. And then I'm going to take some straight up black and I see not only the stem, but the top of the apple are deeper. So I'm going to just accentuate this top black part of the apple and the fact that it comes around to the side. And then I'm going to replace my stem a little bit lower. And then cleaning up my brush. Uh -oh. Now next I want to draw my shadow shapes for the bowl. And so there's a lot of different things happening in the shadows, but I'm going to take uh, some of this blue color mixed with the black some of the early stuff that I had, but I'm making it a little bit more on the black side. And I want to create the wide portion for the circumference of this bowl or cup. That's my shadow shape. I'm going to kind of over accentuate those angles. 
I can still see my dark line here that helps me to remember, and I see my dark line here, which also helps me. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the apple. I want to come off the side of the apple and make that triangle. And then I want to come down and over and back up again. So that I have some shadow shapes down. And I'm going to put a second coat over here. Okay, now this next part's a little bit more fun, I think, because now I've got to kind of shoo the rest of the background colors in. Now, in relation, the whole bottom part and right part look cooler to me, right? And then this part looks more white and this part looks more warm or ochre. So I'm literally gonna take some ochre with my brush. I don't have a lot, right? You see, it's just a little bit. And I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna kind of scrub a little bit of ochre up here into the corner. Not much, but just enough to kind of, you know, dirty the top. I still wanna see the red. I'm not trying to conceal the red. I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, black and dirty it up in there too. I'm just touching my corners, sliding all the way down around the side of the apple. And even take that excess stem off and move my way in a little bit more and it's just a dirty hazy um, ochre color and I'm going to put a little bit on this side connecting to the blue and in the center I could put some down but it's really relevant because I'm about to put some white on it anyway I'll put a little bit down. Okay, then I'm looking down here to this corner and I'm taking some of this um, earlier lighter blue that I had. And again, just washing the brush over it. Just so that it's cool. It's a little bit different color than the one over here on the right. But essentially I've got all that dark color down. And so what I'm looking at now is a toned background that's got um, accentuations of cool and well, cool and warm, and then also highlight. So there's more intense light right here around the spoon and the cup, and that's where the brightest colors seem to be. So that's where I don't have as much staining because I know there's gonna be more white coming down there. And then what I can do is I'm gonna wet my brush. So I'm tipping it in my water cup, and then um, tapping it on a paper towel to get the excess water out and then I'm going to begin to uh, grab some white and I'm just uh, smearing the white on my palette because there's enough uh, dirtiness in the brush that it's going to stain the white slightly so it's not like bright straight up white okay and then hopefully this is all still kind of moist enough where when I go to uh, put the white over it not only am I going to be able to see a little bit of the red but I'm also going to be able to mix with the colors that are still on there. Now, one thing to consider is that um, I want to start where my brightest white is. And because it's the brightest white around the spoon, that's where I'm going to lay down first. Because if it ends up being too bright, it won't matter because that's the brightest part anyway. Um, so that's typically how I lay down the color. And then I work my way out. And you can already see some of that uh, residue, that dirty residue picking up and staining the colors, and that's great. And I'm just outlining the spoon. And don't worry about smoothing out your strokes. This is not about making the background look exactly like the background at this point. It should be a thin, dirty layer. It should not be bright white. 
It should not be finished and resolved. It should just be the beginning of a thin, lighter layer. And it's going to create this hazy, dreamy look that's nice and you can move it away. Now you can spin yours around just because the camera orientation I'm not, but if I was, I would move it and then go this way, etc. But I'm going to do it, you know, leaving it this way so you can see. And I'm going to sculpt around the edge of the cup. And I don't know, Dirty Whites was probably like the best acrylic lesson I ever got. And I finally realized that whites were not white at all. <laughs> and so every time I get a, a activity that involves like dirty white colors, I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. So it may not, my, my fun and your fun may not be the same kind of fun. And then I'm going to come down here toward the bottom. why I didn't freak out when I got that little droplet out earlier either because I knew I was going to cover it. Now I've just noticed for the first time a little bit of the shadow from the spoon down here so I'm just going to um, leave that out. I'm going to paint around it so there's like a little mark that's a little bit darker and that's a okay and then I'm going to angle these up a little bit more like she has them and you'll see now that you've got kind of a dirty uh, hazy silhouette of the cups Now at this point for me, I'll be able to make any kind of um, determining factors like, do I want to change anything? What's important? What's not important? That kind of stuff. So I can tell you off the bat some things that I'm noticing. I noticed that my handle needs to be a little bit more curved. Um, otherwise it's going to look, you know, really flat. Um, I also know that I'm looking here at how much further beyond the handle the cup extends and so what I mean by that is that if I were to take a straight edge and let's move this aside really quick if I were to take a straight edge and say well how much further beyond that handle does the cup go and I'm going to take a straight edge and put it right up to where the edge of that handle is till it disappears now look at how much cup is still on the right side and specifically I'm talking about this cup on the top and look at that shape right so then if I come back to my painting and I say hmm let me do that same thing again and put this right up to the edge of my handle and then I'm looking at that shape that the cup is left over with right and then I can do the same thing with the cup here I'm going to take it until it hits this tip of the cup straight edge and then look at how much of the bottom cup is still tipping over so same thing here there's my cup wow look at all that extra cup that's there so i got some choices to make either i can taper this cup in or i can shift this cup over okay so i already identified that the apple was too far over i kind of adjusted that the quickest and easiest thing for me to do is just to take a little bit of this cup off and add a little bit more background. And so it's only got to be about a millimeter, but I'm going to do it because it's the right thing to do. And no, I'm not looking forward to it. And I'm just taking a little bit more off. And I'm going to let this taper up. And 
that slims down my um, cup a little bit more. Now everything's still true. If I were to cover up the edge of this cup, now there's less of the um, second cup showing through and the handle's still in alignment, etc. So it was an easy, quick choice to make. Um, and I'll get better measuring over time is what I'm telling myself. So um, I'll catch mistakes like that faster the more I get uh, experience I get. So I'm going to adjust this handle a little bit also. I'm going to curve it in. So I'm taking a little bit of my dark color and I'm curving the handle. So curve. And then I'm going to come over so that's curved instead of straight. And then I'm going to do that on the other side too. You may not have to make these adjustments, but I did. Okay. And then another thing that I saw that I noticed was the angle here for the top of the cup is okay. But then this almost seems to go up and over a little bit more. It's not a huge distinction, but I'm going to fix it anyway so that I can go up with this handle and then down a little bit more with that slight change. But I think the important part of this lesson is that everything can in fact be changed so that it makes a difference. Is we tend to let things get a little bit too uh, white and then it's like overbearing. So we wanna keep these dirty whites. Um, and so I like the haziness of this. Everything was real thin and intentional. So what I wanna do at this point is, the paint's kind of dry to the touch now, which is the great thing about acrylic. I wanna go in and darken my darks because before I was trying to and it wasn't quote unquote sticking. So I wanna come in and just accentuate. I see some dark here, right, on the corner. I see some dark here at the base of this uh, spoon. And then maybe a little mark up here at the top as well. And it's coming out so much darker now on the slick panel that it's actually sticking. I see some dark at the top of the apple here. So I'm gonna put that in as well. And then I'm gonna just taper this around and come down a little bit. Okay. And then I see a big shadow down here for the apple. And this is really gonna help me distinguish some more of my shapes and maybe you know what I need to or could do in order to readjust the apple if needed. Reds are typically transparent, so it's really hard to mix a red and a black together. You have to be real sparing with your black and real um, heavy with your red. Uh, the red I'm using is pyrrole red, so it's a little bit more, um, it, it's a more opaque and it's more bright for sure. So that helps out a lot. Uh, and I'm gonna do a little bit of this stem too. And my stem's like way fat, but it's okay. I'm gonna conceal it with some background color in a minute. Another thing is you can also take your brush clean and, and damp, but not soaking wet, and you can mop back up. So whenever you make a, a mark and it's too wide, you can just kind of suck it back up. Okay, so um, with the wider brush, you can choose a tool for the job. We were using the two brushes, the big and the little one, but I'm gonna go in with um, a little bit more of a, um, I like this blue color, but it's got a little bit more ochre in it. So I'm mixing some ochre to the black and blue mixture that I had. And I'm gonna try and pull down, not quite dark enough, so I'm adding a little bit more of my darkest color, which is black. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more here, just to deepen it up. Still not quite dark enough, so I'm gonna try and wipe off this excess. And just get some deeper black, that's better. It's finally a little more solid, a little more thick. I'm putting a little bit more down here on the bottom of this cup. And then I'm gonna start moving into the darts on the handle. I see a little spot there and a spot there. 
Now, if this feels a little tighter for you, feel free to move to a smaller brush. Um, I like working with a bigger brush, um, but you may feel that when you get around to this middle part of the cup, you want to go a little bit more smaller. But I'm taking my white and I'm creating a dirty white over here. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of the rest of this red, not completely, but at least, you know, smoke over it so that it's not so in your face. And I'm going to go over this side. And before my handle was a little bit too large, but now I've kind of taken part of that off and that feels a little bit better. I'm going to put a little bit of my shape down here. And then I'm letting it be a little bit darker with some of the black. And I'm going to come around and do a triangle shape down here. And it's not quite opaque enough, so I'm pulling some more of the white, but with that, I've got to pull the other colors in too. Because I'm trying to conceal a little bit more of that red. And if it looks more frightful than delightful, then you're probably doing it right. <laughs> Okay, now I notice when I'm looking, because it comes to this color comparison, these look like the same color to me. This one looks a little bit lighter, but it's still not white, right? So I can pull a little bit of white and ochre. And I've got like this, you know, hazy, dreamy view of it. Little reds peeking through. Um, it becomes a comparison game. I'm looking at this part of the cup, and then I'm looking at this dip inside the cup. And then I'm also looking at this dip inside the cup. So if I had to place this on a value scale, this would be darker, and these two would probably be similar, right? So I've already got that color here, so I'm just going to take a little bit more of it. And I'm going to fill in this gap with a little bit of that blue. And then the only colors that are remaining, there's a little strip here, are like a brighter white. So I can go in and kind of finesse those up. But just look at the rawness of what I've got right now. I mean, there's a good light source on it. Um, you know, there's a lot of transparency. So the closer you look at it, the, the more it's kind of like, mm. but, you know, overall, we got a good feeling of it. Um, and we were able to lay it out. And you can see that some of the minor adjustments with just a couple of color shifts really put it back into perspective, and that helped a great deal. So I'm double checking my spots. I'm going to look at this top cup, and it's going to come about values again, right? Okay, so let's check this out. That this, this tone and this tone on opposite sides of the handle seem to be the same, and that's true for me here, right? I do have a little bit more of the red showing than I want, but you know, I can put a secondary coat on that if I want and conceal it down. I like some of the red showing through, so I don't really like covering all of it up, but I can just attest that at least those values are the same, which is true in the picture. Okay, then I can say this value off to the side is bluer, and then it gets even blacker up here at the top. Now, one thing that is different than my picture is there's some darker gray on this side, so rather than keep cleaning my brush out, I can just take my other brush, which is, doesn't have any, and I can put some dark on it. And I can come up here in this corner and just touch in some darkness to kind of marry that together, right? And I even see that it kind of streaks down into the other color, so I'll just let it do that. And then I can put some, you know, hash streaks here, just kind of blend these colors in together if I want. And maybe just put a secondary tone on them. Okay, now this is a little bit too dark value for me, so I can pull up a little bit of my dirty white. And I got to be careful because if it's too white, then um, it's going to take over the whole thing. So look, I don't usually like paint on my hands. Uh, that's kind of a lie. But there's a little, just a little bit of paint on here. It's not a lot. So what I want to do is I just want to like 
glaze over this a little bit, just enough to pull a little bit of light out and let it kind of blend in with the other so I can catch some reflection. If there's too much white on the brush, it's just going to gangbusters and, and turn the whole thing bright in your face white. So you want to kind of be careful with it. Notice how I haven't put the bright white on the top of the cup or the handle yet. I'm only doing the other colors. Then I'm going to come down here and look at this color. And I like the bluish tone that I have, but the cups overall have a little bit more ochre than what I'm painting into them. So I'm going to pull some more ochre in. I still want the color to be dark, but I'm trying to warm them up a little. And I'm going to try and put a secondary coat down here. It's still kind of greenish from the blue, but it's just a secondary coat that has a little bit more of a warmth to it. And I'm filling that in. And that kind of brightens things up a little bit. And then I can come back and readjust it here if I want as well. Now with these thin layers, especially on a uh, slick panel, um, you have to almost treat the brush like a palette knife or it's going to keep ripping up the subsequent layers. And that can be a challenge. Okay. And then I'm going to get just a touch wider and lighter. And I'm going to redo this side of the cup. You know, the cool thing about Carol Marine is that, you know, a lot of her stuff is really modular. So these strokes stay pretty geometric and angular. And that's what kind of makes the paintings do their thing. Okay, now I'm going to clean up my brush. And I'm going to come over and visit the apple a little bit, show the apple some love. I've got a little bit of red and a little bit of black. Remember how powerful I told you the black could be. And I'm for sure going to put some second coating on this apple because it's looking kind of, it's looking like that apple that the witch gave Snow White. <laughs> that was funny. Come on. All right. So I'm going to. Pull this over, give it a second coat. I'll probably have to give my black another coat too, but at least I got more body. And that's the good thing about painting, especially when you're using transparent colors. If you really want something to look modular um, or let it have body, you've got to get a good substantial amount of paint. First off, I'm going to get a little bit more black here. Um, and then second, you've got to um, put enough layers on it. Now I'm painting on a slick panel. If you've got canvas texture or something like that, it, it you know, there's benefits and setbacks to each one. The canvases tend to have what I call pixels where you have to paint in the grooves um, and you have to get that covered up. Otherwise you'll have these white spots that are kind of distracting, but then the panels are really slick. So you, you have to, you can only paint so much before um, it'll start kind of pulling the paint back up and you gotta let it dry a minute to set on there and you can pull out some other. So I'm adding a little bit more paint here so I can have some more body to it. And then I'm gonna have to go back in and paint my red again, or my black. So I'm taking my small brush and I'm just gonna re-hit those black sections super quick. And again, I'm seeing it come down from the stem. And I'm just putting those dark modular pieces on there. And then this one little area here and then on the back side here are just a little bit more red. So I'm pulling some red, mixing it into my pile here. 
And I've got some glare from this light, but I'm going to try and just put some brighter red down. Boom. And then I want to also get some on the side here. Boom. And I'm going to tone this bad boy down a little bit. All right, and I'm gonna pull this black apple part down a little bit so I can identify what's shadow and what's not. And speaking of shadow, that's where I'm gonna go next. Clean out my brush. And I'm gonna revisit the shadow and you'll notice here, look at these uh, dirty gray buffed kind of whited out spots so I've got plenty of red showing up here um, so what I'm going to try and do is just dry brush some of this um, color in here so I've got a little bit of ochre and white that I'm mixing together and then I'm pulling a little bit of this blue now again I don't want too much of the white or it will really make a mess of things and I don't want a lot of paint on the brush. So, you know, if you've got a lot of paint, you can kind of wipe it off on your palette, not necessarily your finger, and you'll get a real smooth, crisp brush angle like this. And you can go in and dry brush a lot of this stuff on here. See how even with that little bit of a paint, you see how like much paint it actually was, right? So I'm just gonna leave it for now because I can show you how to fix it out. But I'm going in these areas where I see that dirty gray and I'm depositing paint everywhere where I saw it, right? Once I have it deposited, I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel. So now it's a, a pretty clean brush and I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna feather these edges to blend that in. And it's gonna to tone down the white a little bit and let the residue kind of build that, that haziness for the uh, shadows. Because you see it's not that bright everywhere, it's just in certain places. But you have to work, you know, kind of fast because the paint dries, especially when it's this thin. So, you know, you may want to just deposit one section at a time and then haze it out. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with a little bit of black. I'm not even cleaning my brush. And I'm going to go in and darken some of these sections with that same hazing. And basically, as it conceals some more of the red, it's just going to let, you know, some shadow and some highlight um, parts of the, sh of the shadows come out. And I'm just tickling it together until I get a nice, soft look. Just tapping it and tickling it. And I don't want to go too solid black on the shadow because then it'll really be hard to differentiate the apple um, from the shadow itself. We'll put a little bit more light in here. A little bit here on the side. I'm doing a little bit of gray to kind of shade that shadow into it. Same thing here. This is a sharp crisp line. So I'm just going to put a little bit on top to just kind of give it some atmosphere. And I'll go back in with some black and do the same thing. It just gives it a little bit more texture and body. Okay. Now one thing I want to do for my cup is I want to uh, make it a little bit more angular. You may not have to do this to yours, but Mine feels like it needs to be adjusted a little bit, but I'm just gonna come down and make it a little bit more straight and over to give it a little bit more of an angle. Didn't really want it to be any brighter. I just wanted to be a little bit more, more of a cup shape down here on the bottom. I'm gonna mix up something a little darker to conceal some of that. 
Okay. Okay. Now, typically I work back to front. In this case, um, I'm going to go, well, I can, I'll do back to front. I'll do that. I was going to start down here just because almost none of this is touching and it'd be easy just to close this out where this has a lot of stuff going on around it, but I'll stick, stick to the process. So with my background, I did not get too opaque with it. Um, so you may have gone a little bit brighter. You may not need to do this step, but I need to lighten up or at least put more body on my background. So I'm going to take some white, but I never put bright white down. I mean, there, there is so little pure bright white in my paintings or very other paintings. So I'm mixing this dirty white, which is white ochre and a little bit of blue and depending on where I'm going it'll be cooler and have more blue or it'll be warmer and have more um, ochre so I'm kind of revisiting some of this it doesn't have to have a lot there's not a lot of paint on the brush I'm going to just make sure and wipe the excess off and then it's going to be more one stroke right so I'm just coming down and I'll determine you know at that point if it's too blue if it's too white etc and I'm just putting these simple strokes on and just letting it fade off. I'm not trying to flatten my image, which that's kind of what's happening, but I'm not trying to. So what I'm gonna do is pull a little bit more of this blue that I've mixed in and I'm coming off to the side with a little bit more while it's wet. And I'm just blending it right in, you see? And then that way I'll have just a little bit more cooler blue over here. But I'm really, you know, tapping into a lot of that red. I don't necessarily have to cover it all up, but you can see, uh, hopefully without the glare, you see that there's a subtle difference between the blue into this brighter. And over here, nothing's even blue, so I'm not even going to go over there. But while I've got it on the brush, I'm just going to go ahead and put a second coat down here, just because I don't want to have to do it again. So just on my blue section, I'm putting another coat. Okay, then I'm rinsing out my brush. And then I'm going to hit this side with an ochre white and it's still a little bit of blue but the higher proportion is on the ochre it's more golden than the uh, color we just mixed and pull some more blue in there still more gold but got a little bit of the blue happening and then i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to just smack it on here to where i'm covering up but I'm, I'm not trying to make it one solid tone so if that starts to happen i can always pull in some other colors. But notice that it's not bright white. And I'm going to cut really close to this stem because maybe I made it a little bit too wide or didn't like it before, but now's my chance to correct it if that's what I'm going to do. Okay. And I'm pulling a little bit more of my black and my ochre in because I really like my dirty corner up there. <laughs> so I'm going to put it back in just to overlap on that wet paint a little bit. Dirty corner. Okay, and it gives some visual depth to it too, so it's not just like white, you know. All right, now when I feel like I've got a pretty decent coverage on it, that's when I can go back and add some more of the um, white on. So I'm going to go back and put some straight up white still mixing it in the other color but it's more intense than anything i've used before and i'm going to come right to the side of the 
spoon or fork or whatever that utensil is. And I'm just kind of outlining it very subtly. Subtly. Okay, and then I'm even going to put just a little bit down here in this pack and maybe just a little nook right here. Okay, that's it. And then I'm cleaning off my brush and then I'm coming back and we're tickling the edges. Tickling the edges. Sound effects help. It is pure white, but I was still tapping it in these dirty colors. Yeah, but I didn't mix any colors with it. I just kind of tapped it off on the side. And if you don't make the sound effects, it doesn't work. Just putting that out there. But I'm feathering off my background. And see, now I've got this, like, well, aside from this garish glare, I've got a nice um, white background on here. So with the... Um, with the whiteness, I'm going to just take a little bit more of a dry brush. This is what we were talking about earlier with our phones. If it's dry enough, you can just kind of work the surface without digging down to the bottom layer and just feathering it out so that you have a little bit more of a highlight, depending on where you want to go. And I can do that in the lower corner here. This needs to be um, a little bit brighter, but it's a little bit bluer. So I'm pulling some of my white and a little bit of my blue down, wetting my brush to wet the mixture. It's got still got a little ochre in it, but it's more blue than anything. And then I'm just going to create the lower parts. I do like the ampersand panels because they do at least retain the brush strokes on the surface. So I can cap capture a lot of that in the painting. I'm going to put just a little bit of white there and just kind of settle it in just to accentuate that shadow a little bit more than I did. And for the first time, I'm actually going to switch brushes so I have a little bit more control. But for the first time, I'm going to add some of the highlights in there. They're not pure white, but they're pretty bright. And I can come in. And add something to the side here. And then I'm going to add this here. And I'm noticing that it goes up higher, right, for sure. And let's see what else is white. There is a little bit of that same color around the rim of this bowl or cup. And I'm just doing little dashes. And then there's the shadow of the cup, so I'm skipping that space. And then I'm going to pick off pick up where I left off. Y'all thought I was kidding about those sound effects, didn't you?
Okay. And this could be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to just lighten it up a little bit and come across here. Don't want it to be straight white. So I'm dipping it back in my ochre just a little bit. Here we go. Okay, and then I see a big old splat of white on this handle. And this is for sure straight up white, just right on the top part here. And then there's a little nick of it here. And there's a little bit on this apple. And there's a little bit on the top of this utensil here, whatever that is, whatever we want to call that. I think I've pretty much called it everything <laughs> since we started. Okay, and then I'm gonna put just another layer on the utensil itself because there's a lot of red coming through. So I'm gonna mix up a little blue-gray by taking some black, a little bit of blue, and some white. And I'm gonna let it be a little bit more dominant with the blue and the black so it can be nice and dark. And I'm just going to go across here just to deepen that up a little bit. And then I see a little bit of a, uh, get some of that blue off my brush. It's more of a gray color that comes down the side here. And then just a little bit here covered up. All right, and I think pretty much that's it. You can go in and tweak a little bit. There's some dark spaces like here. I'd want to cover up some of this where the shadow of the handle's coming from, cover up some of that red. Uh, maybe some other places where this red could be a little bit distracting and it may take two coats, but there is some there. There's some in the side of this cup where it's got kind of the recession of the shadow. And just having some of that in there. Um, also a little bit on this side. And then oh, I forgot to put the bright part right here, cleaning that off and there's some bright white here. And then just a little bit here. This rem <laughs> reminds me of um, Beauty and the Beast, you know, the little cup. You know how cute it looked, the little cup. Okay. okay. <laughs> it looks like he's just cute peeking out of that other little cup. All right, I'm going to do one more thing only because I think that this is too flat for me. Flat meaning that it's just boring. There's nothing interesting. I know I added some extra, but I'm going to try and create the same light here that I had here. And so it's cooler. So I'm mixing up some of this blue and white. Um, and I want it to be lighter than what's down there. And I'm going to start closer to the shadows and just put a couple of bright strokes in there. I'm wetting my brush to keep it slick because the paint underneath is already starting to dry, so it's getting sticky. But I'm going to just slap some paint down in this corner and especially around this little shadow with a spoon to really help accentuate it or whatever that thing is. And then maybe just a little bit around the apple. Okay, so again, we deposited it. I'm cleaning my brush off, and then I'm coming back, and what are we doing? We're tickling the edges. Just to soften it up a little bit, but it helps to give it more interest and break that section up. Remember, you know, when it looks too flat or boring, you know, we want to try and give it a little bit more 
visual interest. This is too rounded for me, so I'm going to kind of hack into it a little bit and give it more of that angular look like she does with her shadows. And uh, I don't know. I think that's kind of it. Um, put a couple more little highlights in some places just to bring the light out a little bit more. Knowing when to stop is also a good good attribute for me. And I'm gonna put just a little bit more highlight right here. Oops. I just can't stop. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop for real.